You have found the Behind the Lines podcast presented by BetMGM for week number five in the National Football League. My name is Steven Andrus, joined each and every week on this show by Christian Cipollini, manager of sports trading over at BetMGM. On this show, we look at the week that was betting in the NFL for the previous week, the biggest public wins, the biggest public losses. We will also look ahead to week five, the early week lines and totals over at BetMGM. And in this special episode, it's playoff baseball time. So we'll ask Christian the view from the book, which teams are his colleagues and BetMGM rooting against the most, the biggest liabilities in World Series futures. But first of all, Christian, how are you? Congratulations on squeaking by the commanders as you are an Eagles fan. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a sweaty one there, but I was happy to see they at least won, and that one was good for the book too because uh, a lot of people were betting the Eagles there and they did not cover. No, they did not cover that eight, eight and a half points. It might have even gotten to nine in a couple spots if I remember correctly, but regardless – biggest uh well you know let's just start overall here was it a public win or a public loss this week overall public loss but it wasn't it wasn't a huge win for the book just a, just a okay one there's really one game that that helped us swing it and it swung it both directions so luckily for us it worked out now if we're yeah. checking the uh the scoreboard overall here i believe that is now five four and oh for the book to start the week start the year here yeah yeah so has there's one week that was a very big one. The other ones have just been good winners, not great winners. But yes, so far four and zero. All right, so let's start with you know some positivity here for the public. What were some of the public wins in week number four? Yeah, last night for sure we were not getting almost any action on the Giants. Wow, uh, Seahawks won that one easily. That that's one of the few times where we we had sharp play on the Seahawks and we had public play on the Seahawks. We didn't really have much action at all on the Giants, so we we got. We got knocked around on that one. And yeah. uh, the early London game, too, hmm. uh, we were just taking all Jags money. And I guess they, they like them at their uh, their second home there. And, uh, yeah, they obviously won pretty easily. So not a good one for us. I don't know if people were back in the Jags or just betting against Desmond Ritter at this point. He has just been a complete zero at quarterback, unfortunately, for a roster that looks pretty good except for the quarterback position. Um, it surprises me a little bit about the Seahawks because we've talked about in the past that New York is the biggest sports betting market in the country. We're talking just overall, the state, New Jersey's not too far behind. Lots of Giants fans there as well. So were you surprised that it was one-way action because Giants started as a small favorite, went all the way out to around two and a half by kickoff? Uh, that surprised me a little bit at least considering just – you know, I know it's sharp money that moves the line, but you said overall the, the tickets as well were on the Seattle Seahawks, which that part of it surprises me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, usually we do. I guess maybe some of the normal Giants fans uh, just didn't feel it, kind of gave up on them. I'm not really sure exactly what happened. But, yeah, usually we'll be more lopsided on the New York side. Um, we were just still taking Seattle money. At least, I guess, the non-New York betters, almost all of them did not believe in it, it seemed. All right, so what we've learned over the past two weeks in terms of fan bases and betters of those fan bases that have good self-awareness, the Denver Broncos fans and the New York Giants know when their team isn't very good and will stop betting on them. That's good to know. Good yeah. mental note. Good on you, Broncos and Giants fans. It, it takes a lot of maturity to reach this level. Not many fan bases get there. So congratulations on that, even though your teams are struggling this year. All right, Christian. Uh, how about the opposite side here? What were some of the biggest public losses in week number four? Yeah, we, there was a few. Uh, Eagles commanders was a good one for us. Uh, Titans Bengals was another one. And mm. uh, the big one, <clears throat> the big swing was the Chiefs Jets game. Uh, Patrick Mahomes sliding uh, was a significant significant change. Uh, millions of dollars shift one way to the other on that slide. Uh, if he goes all the way in, uh, we take uh, a big loss on that one, but instead it, it worked out in our favor. And uh, Sunday night game, which always gets a lot more action, so it, it was a big swing. And I assume that is not a new development where you guys in a primetime game are taking a lot of Chiefs money. Yep, <laughs> for sure, especially against Zach Wilson and the Jets. I mean, obviously, he looked a lot better in that game, but going into it, yeah, we were not writing many Jets bets. Yeah, fair enough. So, I mean, look, this is the Chiefs when it comes to covering spreads, right? We've seen this over the past few years. 
The week before, they cover a huge number against the Chicago Bears. The week after, they fail to cover a big number against the Jets. Overall, over the past couple of years, the Chiefs are about a 500 team in covering the spread. So uh, just keep that in mind moving forward as you see all these big numbers with the Kansas City Chiefs. It's not just as simple as them winning the game. Uh, Covering the number means you have to be dominant when we're talking about the way the NFL is now. Two deep safeties, longer drives, fewer possessions. In situations like that, it becomes increasingly difficult to cover big numbers. Okay, Christian, let's move forward here to week number five in the NFL. The early week spreads and totals, and we'll begin with an absolute barn burner on Thursday night football. The Chicago Bears at the Washington Commanders. Yeah, I think this is going to be one of our more uh, one of our lower handle Thursday night games for sure. But the Commanders are six and a half point favorites at home with a 44 point, 44 and a half point total. Did this? I'm pretty sure this touched seven everywhere for for you. Did, did can you confirm that that this spread did get the seven at some point on Monday? Do you remember? I don't remember off the top of my head, but one second. And I'll filibuster for did. you here. <laughs> no, it did. It did. Yeah, it did for touch seven. Slightly. Okay. We weren't there long, about an hour, and then we went right back to six and a half. All right. So less than an hour. This was Commanders minus seven. Some money came in on the Bears at that point. That was the stopping point for the Bears backers. So now we're settling in around six and a half here. Um, yeah, usually those key numbers, of course, uh, when we start touching them early in the week, some people get some sharp action when they see that that nice, nice, pretty seven they like. Yeah, absolutely. For for us at the lines, uh, we have our Discord channel. Our staff will share some bets in there. If you want to join, you can go to the top right hand corner of the lines dot com and hit the Discord button. It is completely free. And yesterday I was one of the people that hopped on that Chicago plus seven, plugging my nose, putting blinders on, not really wanting to look at my screen when I hit the button, but um, just pretty simple handicap for me here. I have the commanders in the bottom 10 of the NFL, despite looking better against the Eagles. And I just don't think they should be seven point favorites over literally anybody in the NFL. And I think at this point, the bears would really be the only team that they would be seven point favored against in the market so we're going to put that to the test uh i did take the bears at plus seven that seven is gone as we record right now we'll see if it comes back later in the week but uh just some uh some full transparency and an early week bet that i made for everybody out there uh for thursday night football god help me i am backing matt eber and the chicago bears who have really not won anything but hey i don't need them to win just don't lose by more than a touchdown please yeah, and thank there's- you Thursday night games with less time to prepare tends to be a little bit closer too. So, so at least you're on the sharp side there with the seven. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move forward here with another London game. Uh, We have the Jaguars staying in London. The first time we've seen this. Uh, Nevertheless, they had to change hotels for some reason and the bills get their hotel and the Jags go to a different hotel. I don't, I don't know why. (laughs) Didn't, doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, but nevertheless, they have the travel advantage and maybe a, the biggest travel advantage we've seen in the NFL with a team staying in London. But it's going to get put to the test against what might be, and you tell me, Christian, might be the number one team in power ratings now with the Buffalo Bills. If they're not, they're pretty close. Yeah, they're they're absolutely in tier one, uh, okay. especially after that, the Dolphins, which everyone loved the Dolphins last week, and then they go and, and basically stomp them. Guilty. Uh, yeah. Guilty as charged. <laughs> Fell for it. <laughs> All right, so what do we got here spread in total for that London game? Bills minus five and a half on uh, the neutral site home here and uh, 49 point total. All right, I, fair line here. No bet for me at this point. Um, I still am not impressed with Jacksonville for whatever reason. This Press Taylor experiment at offensive coordinator is is not working to this point. Even in that win against the Falcons, they – Uh, We're outgained on a yards per play basis by Atlanta, which is really not impressive, to be honest with you. They kind of um, are just winning games ugly right now, Jacksonville, or losing games ugly. So um, I'm not sure they can hang with the Bills, but with that travel situation being unprecedented, it's enough for me to kind of back off here. Maybe later in the week I'll try some type of um, teaser or money line parlay with Buffalo sitting below six. Not ready to pull the trigger on that quite yet. Um, I do know our director, Brett Colson, a Bills fan, 
uh, thinks that the travel advantage is so significant. And there's enough variance in this game that he did pull the trigger on Jacksonville money line in this game at greater than two to one. So um, just playing a good number, I think there. Uh, but you know, there's I think that shows there's opinions on both sides here, despite the fact that the Bills look, looked amazing and the Jaguars have disappointed through four weeks of the season. Okay, transitioning now, Christian, to the early week slate in week number five in the National Football League. Yeah, Texans at Falcons. Falcons are one point one point favorites here with a forty one and a half point total. Panthers, Lions, Lions are nine point favorites at home with a forty five point total. Titans, Colts, Colts are one and a half point favorites, forty two and a half point total. Dolphins, Giants, Dolphins are eleven point favorites wow. at home here with a forty nine point total. Saints, Patriots, Patriots are one and a half point favorites at home with a forty point total. Last of the one o'clock, Ravens, Steelers, Ravens are four and a half point favorites on the road here with a thirty eight and a half point total. Before we move on to the late window, Christian, let's touch on some of the line movement here in this window because it's certainly notable for sure. The The Dolphins were uh, under 10 before the Giants put t- together another debacle in prime time. So now we're sitting at 11 there for the Dolphins. Um, the I think what's interesting here is with the, with the Texans-Falcons game, you had a Falcons team that the market and the sharp betters were in love with the first couple weeks of the season. And now they're playing kind of the, the new fad team in the market in the Houston Texans. This line was two, two and a half to start the week and Texans money has come in. And if you look at NFL EPA uh, on offense over the past couple of weeks, the Texans offense and CJ Stroud is right up in that upper tier. And now small sample size, only a two week window from week three and four, but they're in that upper echelon tier with teams like the Chiefs and the 49ers and the Dolphins. So uh, they have something cooking there with C.J. Stroud. He's got good weapons on the outside, despite the fact that the offensive line has been a mash unit. They've figured out a way to make it work. And they have D'Amico Ryans, who's a great defensive coordinator as a head coach, doing enough with that defense and Will Anderson and company. Um, they were extremely impressive. So I think it's at least notable that, the kind of the, the favorite team of sharp betters has transitioned from the Falcons to the Houston Texans th- th- at this point. And I use some of those generous bonus bets at bet MGM with Kentucky launched down here in my home state on the Houston Texans to win the AFC South at around five to one odds this week. So I think that division is wide open. I don't know who's going to win it. I actually think the Titans might be the least likely at this point because I just don't believe in their defense and their offensive line. But it wouldn't shock me if any of those four teams wins the AFC South at this point, Christian. I think you'd probably agree with that, right? That's by far the most wide-open division in my mind. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Jaguars going into the season was the team that was supposed to be the favorite, and they've looked Favored shaky. over the field, right? Like, you had to yeah. pay minus money on them to win the mm-hmm. division. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure, because, I mean, going into it, the Texans look to be bad, the Colts look to be bad, and, and um, the Titans look to be bad, too. But they're all 2-2 two two at this point. The Colts have looked a lot better. Um, and, yeah, the Texans look very good. C.J. Stroud hasn't thrown an interception yet. He's throwing the ball all over the field and hasn't thrown a pick. So that offense looks great. And they have a pretty easy schedule, too, the rest of the way, too. That's the biggest factor for me because the Texans play that last play schedule and the Jaguars play that first place schedule with some really tough games against Buffalo this week, still have Philly on the schedule. So um, schedule plays a big factor here when you're talking about teams that go from worst to first in these division races from one year to the next. So agree with you on that one. And um, there's one other line movement here I just want to touch on. The, the Lions against the Panthers. Um, Panthers just offense looks completely broken. I put them number 32 in my power rankings this week If in terms of teams I would have favored over a new – over others on a neutral field. I would have the Bears favor over the Panthers on a neutral field at this point, believe it or not, because at least the Bears have shown us something on offense now at this point, where the Panthers, against one of the worst defenses in the NFL, only scored seven points. The other seven came from a pick six. So not surprised here that this has moved out of teaser range. Lions past eight and a half, now to nine. Um, So that's interesting to me. Okay, late window here, Christian, the 4 o'clock Eastern time kickoffs at BetMGM. Yeah, Eagles at Rams. Eagles are four-and-a-half-point favorites on the road, one of the highest totals at 50-and-a-half. Bengals Cardinals. Bengals are three-point favorites on the road, 44-and-a-half-point total. 
Jets Broncos. Broncos are one and a half point favorites at home, 43 and a half point total. And then the biggest total of the week, Chiefs Vikings. Chiefs are five and a half point favorites on the road with a 53 point total. It is not a game many people are going to want to watch, but from a betting perspective, it is maybe the most fascinating spread of the week. The Bengals at the Cardinals. The Bengals market rating has tanked at this point, right, Christian? And that's what this spread indicates. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Cardinals have been double-digit dogs in almost every game this season. I think every game this season, uh, even even when they're at home. So the fact that it's just a, a normal you know, field goal spread here tells you all you need to know about how the Bengals have been this season. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a little bit about at least a minor upgrade on the Cardinals rating at this point, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, a bit of both. I mean, they've at least shown competency. They were kind of mm-hmm. expected to almost just be a, you know, a double A team. Uh, they were expected to be by far the worst, but every game that they're double digit favorites and they're at least keeping it close enough um, to show that they, they can play somewhat. And again, yeah, you're right. This is, this is definitely a combo of lower rating the Bengals and higher rating the Cardinals. So just to give a quick recap on the evolution of this line this week, Bengals at Cardinals, the preseason line when we thought the Bengals were a Super Bowl contender and the Cardinals were the rock bottom worst team in the league. The Bengals were about seven and a half when these lines opened over the summer, seven and a half on the road against Arizona play a couple weeks. Arizona looks competitive. Bengals going into that game against the Titans last week. On the look-ahead line, the Bengals were still minus six or so at Arizona. They lay the egg. The Cardinals continue to look competitive. And now we're all the way down to the key number of three. I mean, if this isn't rock bottom for the Cardinals, or for the Bengals, I should say, I'm not sure what is. If they lose this game, I mean, season basically over at this point. So I, I just, I'm, I'm not surprised based on what we, what both teams have put on the field. But if if you would have told August me what this spread was going to be, I would have said you're out of your mind. So it's just, you know, the most interesting spread of the week for me. That is for sure. Uh, okay, Christian, let's wrap things up here with prime time. Uh, awesome one on Sunday night football. Oh, yeah, definitely the game of the week. Cowboys 49ers. 49ers three and a half point favorites at home. So you got a little bit of the hook there and total of 45. For Monday night, Packers Raiders, Packers two and a half point favorites on the road with a 44 and a half point total. So just another quick market rating lesson for the casual betters out there. You have the 49ers as about a three and a half point favorite in this game. That's where it opened. That's where it sits right now. So if these two teams were to play on a neutral field, you would have the 49ers rated higher than the Cowboys, but we are talking just by a couple of points here, if that, right? Yeah, yeah, it would just it would pretty much probably be 49ers minus 115, Cowboys minus 105 on the money line would, would probably be where it sits. Wow, yeah, so very tight here. Uh, for me, I am eyeing this game. If people come in and want to gobble up that hook on the Cowboys and get plus three and a half, and we get down to minus three on the 49ers, that would be a buy point for me, and it is something I would share in the Discord. We're not there yet. I'm curious if we do get there or not. I think we've seen over recent years that this is a uh, a matchup nightmare for the Cowboys and their offense against the 49ers defense, and I think it's a massive coaching edge with Kyle Shanahan and Steve Wilkes, their defensive coordinator now this year against Mike McCarthy. I'm just happy to gobble that up, and I think Trayvon Diggs is at least a notable loss for the Cowboys' defense. I think the Cowboys are going to play teams like the Patriots and the Giants and the Jets and just dominate them. They don't have the talent to do it. But for whatever reason, they they have not been able to match up with the 49ers. Even when they got a bad Brock Purdy game last year and held the Niners to under 20 points, the offense just could not move the ball against the 49ers. So um, game of the week for sure. Can't wait to see it. Don't really have any notes or thoughts here on, on Packers Las Vegas. We'll see what quarterbacks playing for Vegas. We'll see how healthy the Packers are with a mass unit on the offensive line. So um, I think that game's all about the injury reports and we'll see how that develops. Christian, let's wrap things up here with a little talk about baseball as the wild card round begins today on Tuesday. When we're looking at World Series liabilities over at Bet MGM, the teams that are going to cost you the most money. First of all, Are you happy that maybe a couple of teams got eliminated? I'm not sure if you had liabilities that would have cost you a ton if they won the World Series and they didn't even get to the playoffs. 
So that's my first question to you. Any any good results on teams that did not make the playoffs? Yeah, a bunch that we are very happy that didn't get there. Um, uh, I'll start with the Yankees and the Mets, for sure, were ones that we instantly start out with liability. And the fact that both of them are in the playoffs was is stunning. Uh, hmm. Definitely very good for the books. The other team was the Cincinnati Reds, who got very hot in around June and July. And we were taking nothing but bets on them at that point. They had a huge price point. Uh, they're actually our biggest liability under the season. So them not even making the playoffs was was very crucial for us. I think a lot of us in the industry weren't sure how big the Ohio sports betting market would be. And then it opened and we see the dollars and it's blown us all away. Right. And that was, you know, another indication of, you know, fans in that state flexing their wallets and and making that type of liability impact with the Reds. Right. Yeah, it was almost like the Reds probably heard them a bit because it was right around launch time when uh, they were they were getting so hot and and suddenly you're like, all right, they're, they're putting their bets on their team and and then they came back to earth after that. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, Kentucky launched as well last week, and you know Cincinnati's right on the border with Northern Kentucky, so I'm sure there's a lot of Reds fans across uh, across the river there and across the bridge so that may have played a fact a factor as well. Uh, okay, what about the remaining teams in the postseason? Who is the team that you are rooting against the most? Yeah, so the, the one the most and by far the most is the Baltimore Orioles. Um, you know, obviously a great story with them. They had a very high price point in the beginning of the year, and they're currently sitting as by far our biggest liability. Outside of them, uh, we wouldn't want the Phillies, we wouldn't, wouldn't want the Blue Jays, or wouldn't want the Marlins. At this point, we are okay with the Braves, Dodgers, and Astros, which is shocking, but I, it's not going to hold, especially not on the Braves. We're just slightly okay, and as these playoffs go, imagining they are going to continue to win, uh, I'd imagine they'll get up to a liability at some point. So for the audience out there, what did we just learn from that? We learned that the books are okay with taking on more liability on some of these higher priced teams that they probably feel are not as likely to win the World Series. And the Baltimore Orioles were one of those teams earlier in the year that had a massive price, were a big underdog. They continue to shift the price as they get to the playoffs, but they've built up liability over time. And as Christian just said, two of the biggest favorites in the market, not only now, but from spring training, the Braves and the Dodgers, we're among the favorites to start the year. So even if they take a lot of money, it's not going to build up as much liability because the price and the odds are shorter and the potential payout is smaller. So just a quick little lesson there from behind the curtain on how those liabilities work. So, okay, when the Baltimore Orioles, if in fact they do win the World Series, we know that Christian and his team in the office will have the tissue boxes out. That is <laughs> <laughs> Any predictions, Christian? Let's close with that. Just, just you know, your own fandom. Any predictions? Who's who's going to play in the World Series and who's going to win? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll go Homer here, but I'm going to go for a, I'm going to go for a World Series repeat. Uh, the Astros have a e the easiest road on that side for sure, at least in my opinion. Uh, the the Rangers and uh, the Rays are going to eat each other up and then go over to the Orioles. So I think that road and experience is going to help with the Astros and. I'll keep my Homer hat on and the Phillies are built for the playoffs. And I think the rotation and their bats, maybe get them back. Hopefully they can beat the Braves. I hope you're right. I mean, if you're watching on the YouTube side, I'm clad in red here for red October. Uh, no, <laughs> no hiding who my favorite team is. So uh, I do have some world series futures on the Phillies, but also I do have a ticket on a particular AL team that our, our senior writer, Mo Nawara backed. You can go find that on our special MLB wildcard podcast. So I have a ticket on them. Give it a little tease. You can go check out that and uh, figure out who that is. I'll just say this. If Mo is right, I think we may have a repeat of the 2008 World Series. So we'll see. For Christian Cipollini, I'm Steven Andres. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening to Behind the Lines, presented by BetMGM. Best of luck this week.